So it's been about six months since I set this Fluval shaker up and I'm going to go through it today of how I found it. We'll look at the tank and cabinet itself, the equipment and also the aquascape that I've done inside of it. On the whole, I'm really pleased with this Fluval shaker and how it's been running for the last six months. If you're familiar with my channel, then you'll know I've had a few issues with the systems that this particular tank is attached to, but that is not the tank's fault. It's in fact my own fault, so I won't be judging the tank on that. You can see the inhabitants here are looking really happy and the aquascape itself is starting to come along nicely. But we'll leave that until the end of the video if you're interested in the aquascape itself. If you're thinking of buying one of these tanks then you'd probably be interested of how long they last and whether they are a good investment of your money. Now I would say that I have probably had more floods in this shed than you would normally have in your house hopefully anyway and i've also got quite a high humidity compared to most uh, living rooms or kitchens where this tank would probably go that being said this aquarium has coped really well with moisture one of the good benefits of this tank in fact you can see look the uh, the slight green line where this has had wetness around it quite a lot one of the benefits of this tank is the fact that it's on these little feet um, and that's probably saved quite a lot of damage to the base of this aquarium. For numerous reasons um, I've had a few floods in this shed and it stood up to it without a doubt. You can see the Fluval 123 next to it is starting to split here with all the moisture and that hasn't happened on the shaker because of these little legs so great little design there makes it ideal for being in a shop as well as a display because shops flood quite a bit too. In terms of the cabinet as you probably know, these two drawers don't work, they're just for display, but I haven't found that an issue. The cabinet in here works just nicely, it's where I keep all my test kits. The cupboards are functional as well as decorative. I've got the filter in here and I just keep some bits and bobs in this. One thing that has happened, and it might be due to the moisture, is this one doesn't quite close fully anymore. I'm not quite sure if it's just a faulty soft close or it's just because of the moisture in here has warped something but you can see it just stops at that point. While we're on to the filter the 307 is an exceptional aquarium filter it absolutely is strong enough to go onto this aquarium I've also got the Fluval UV running on it as well which really helps with algae and other problems with your aquarium. You can see this is a non-standard setup. If you want to see what I've done here, then I've got another video on this, but basically it's connected to this sump and tank over there. If you want to connect this to a larger filter, you can. So you can see here that the um, 307 pipework fits on the lower end of that hose tail. So there's a larger one above it, which would fit an FX filter or another non fluval brand of filter, should you wish. Unfortunately, you can't fit an FX filter in this cabinet as far as I can tell. I have measured it, it won't fit. So if you wanted an FX filter in there, you'd have to run it outside of the cabinet. So onto the equipment, the glass is really nice. It hasn't scratched, I haven't managed to scratch it despite using an algae magnet here, which are typically what scratches glass. Um, I've not got any scratches from my coral sand on the glass, which I'm really happy with. Um, the worst thing to get in these kind of tanks is scratches all over the glass because it grows algae but it's not happened at all on this tank. None of the seals are split. The tank itself is running perfectly. I have put a black background on it. Now, one thing which is kind of annoying is this permit, and other people have thought the same thing because if you want to remove it, you're gonna to have to remove all of your cabling because this cabling goes on the goes over the top of it. So if you want to take the permit off for whatever reason, you have to take all the plugs and cables away. It's not a massive deal, it's not something I've actually had to do, but in theory, it would be really quite annoying should you wish to. In terms of cabling as well, it did come with this little, um, well I haven't got it anymore, but it comes with a little sucky thing that goes on the glass here that holds your cabling in, but the, um, the sticky pad on that did not last very long. It might just be because this is a salt water tank and the salt destroyed the stickiness, but um, just something that happened to me. And we can see the lighting here. So this Fluval Aquasky light, which essentially is an Aquasky, comes with the tank. It's been working perfectly fine. This even got completely submerged in salt water for 24 hours, 
due to another technical issue I had. It's probably why it's a little bit salty, but it works still. So they're definitely waterproof, and thus far they are salt creep proof as well. I have added a Bluetooth Marine 3.0 on here as well because this is obviously a marine aquarium so I need some marine spectra on there and you can see they both fit perfectly fine this is the second to largest version of this light so don't get the big one because it won't fit but again salt creep from um, where this whole thing flooded one thing you will get if you run it as salt water is salt creep along these runners I have actually cleaned it off but it does build up even though there's a gap between the water and the runners it will eventually happen you can see it sort of behind the glass there as well so obviously these tanks aren't designed for, or at least aren't marketed for salt water so it's not something you'd typically get or you won't get at all in your freshwater setup a thing i do find annoying though is these cover slides although they are good firstly they scratch easily you can see here so you just need a little bit of grit or coral sand on there and it scratches and also the way that they slide over each other, so you do that, which is nice. I mean, it's a lovely slide, but what will happen is when you get lots of condensation on the underside of this top tray, it doesn't matter which one you move, the bottom one always gets water on it, which, you know, it happens, but you can see it just needs a little bit more cleaning than normally if you were just to be like removing the cover trays like that. But it's just one of these things. Um, it, you will end up with lots of watermarks and things on the bottom cover tray. Overall though, I find it to be a really nice kit. It's holding together after six months. It's holding together after all the abuse that uh, I've given it. Non-typical abuse because I'm sure people won't flood their living rooms once a week. And it's running a salt water system. So it just shows you if you want this tank to be salt water, it can handle it. You do need to add a little bit more flow to it. The 307, while it's a great filter, I find it to be slightly underpowered for this tank. Um, so I would probably upgrade it to a 407 or just add a little power head. In this case, I've got a little internal filter, which I'll change to a power head at some point. But it just gives you that flow around the aquarium, which you need for a marine system at least. So let's talk about the Aquascape because this has been ongoing for the last six months, roughly. And if you're a regular viewer to my channel, you will know that I have had major issues from one thing to another. From the system being flooded with tap water, I've had diatoms, I've had all sorts of issues. But now we can see it's looking quite nice. There is a little bit of bacteria in here, unfortunately. Due to my last power cut, the fish got a little bit chilled and I think it's just caused a little bit of a bacterial infection. Some of them have got slight cloudy fins, but I'm giving them garlic, they're all eating and they're all looking quite healthy so I think it's running its course and we should be through that any day now. In terms of the Lava Rock Aquascape you can see it is starting to look absolutely amazing. I'm really really pleased with it. The diatoms just died back overnight you can see here I'm just left with a little bit of hair algae which is going away and the rock itself is starting to come alive. It's starting to get the coralline algae on here which means it's starting to turn into live rock and what this means is all of the algae and macro algae is starting to grow and we're starting to get to the point where I wanted to be about three months ago before I flooded it with tap water. I know a lot of people have been wondering whether lava rock actually is okay in a marine tank and you can see for yourself everything seems to be growing nicely the fish aren't affected by the fact it's lava rock the um, only thing I would say is perhaps maybe there's a little bit more hair algae in here than normal but that being said I do dose fertilizers and the tank itself has had a few issues so I can't really say the lava rocks had much effect because the rock in my sump is suffering similar problems. There's not really a huge amount to um, say about it other than the fact it's starting to develop nicely. It's more of a case of waiting when it comes to this kind of aquascape I have been a little bit frustrated with the progress, a lot of the problems are my own doing, so it's just a matter of now leaving it to mature, obviously it's getting to that point where things are going to start growing, so I'm hopeful in the next couple of months we're going to start seeing some growth and some flourishing of this marine environment as opposed to more issues. 
So thank you for watching. I hope this video has been useful and entertaining. If it has, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you again to my channel members. Thanks for watching and happy fish keeping. <laughs>